Hey, what's going on guys? Tim here again. Got another tutorial for you today. Doing another kind of self-defense kind of lanyard thing. And this is the Celtic Slammer. You can see my reflection there. Hello. Um, yeah, this is similar to the Monkey's Fist, but a little different. And um, looks, as you can tell, it looks quite different. But uh, some of the principles are kind of the same. Anyways, I find this is actually a little easier than the Monkey's Fist. Maybe that's just me, but... I don't know. So we've got this in kind of like a keychain setup. It's pretty cool. And uh, of course you can use this as a kind of flexible uh, self-defense weapon. Now I'm uh, not an expert on self-defense and all that stuff, but if you are going to use something like this as a weapon, of course, you know, be aware of your local laws. And also flexible weapons, um, they're very difficult to control, especially if you don't have practice with them because it's not like a like a stick or something where it's solid. Uh, if you do hit something with this, it will rebound and be careful of that. So, but of course, I'm just teaching you how to make this for fun. Let's say that <laughs> I'm of course I'm not endorsing that you carry this for self defense and whatnot. But of course, it could be pressed into that matter should you need it. All right. So um, that being said, let's get into the tutorial. And remember, guys, if you're looking for any of the material and stuff I use in the video, check out the affiliate links down below because when you shop through those, you're helping out this channel a lot. All right. Okay, so I got my power cord ready. Got about 10 feet, and I hope that should be enough for a four to five pass, Celtic Slammer. Starting in uh, roughly the middle. It's okay if you're a little uneven after we can adjust. Start off by making a single loop like this. Okay, then you're going to take the right strand and put that right on top, like so. Okay, so that's where you should be. The next, you're going to grab that same strand on the right below. You're going to make a loop like this. Then you're going to go through here. Then you're going to go under, over, and under like that and then you're going to pull this strand all the way through and then we end up with this so it kind of looks like a carex bend but it's not exactly the same okay so from here we can add our ball bearing so this next part's a little tricky because um the ball bearing, especially if you're using a larger one like I am, will be a little bit harder to keep in place. So what we're going to do, this is a one and a half inch steel ball bearing. What we're going to do is you're going to kind of push this inner area here open and just kind of make some space like this. See, I'm pushing kind of out and this way. Then now we take our ball bearing. And you're just going to kind of slip this over. It may uh, tend to slip out on you. That will happen. Okay, and there we go. All right, so keep that there. Now I'm going to set this down. Now for the right strand here, I'm going to take this end. So this end is this end here. I'm going to attach my FID going to screw that on real quick. And now we can start doing our passes. So you want to look at your ball bearing like this. And this one is on the right. So from this point, it's actually quite simple. So you see on this side, see where this one is? You're just going to take your fit and follow along this strand here on the right side of it. Okay, so we're going to go through this one. Now, see, it's going to want to slip out. It will be a little tricky at first, but when you get more passes in, it becomes easier. So let's get all this through. Okay, so you see there. Now we're just going to continue along this one. So we're going to go through here. Pull that through.
you're going to have to kind of just balance it and keep everything in the middle. Now next, we're going to go through here, see following this one. And again, I'm going to continue following. So we're along this way here. Go through here. Oops, you know, don't get caught up like I did here. Make sure that stays on the outside. So get this out of the way. Okay, so there I am now. Let's go through here. Again, try to keep everything nice and centered. So where are we now? Okay, we're here. I think this might be getting close to the end, so go through here. So wherever there's one strand, you want to double it up. It's pretty simple. And keep going through here. Okay, there we go. So now we've done, that's two passes. Now at this point it's a little loose. What I suggest is you just kind of tighten everything up. Um, just kind of pull on a bit of a slack, just work it through. But it actually will get easier the more passes you put on it. So now, rather than keep continuing with the same strand we're, we're um, I guess we're kind of weaving with, I'm actually going to switch the fid over to the other side because I don't want to have to make both strands super uneven. So, so this one is connected to this strand. We're going to detach our fid and we're going to attach it to the other side because this side is now longer, right? Because I've been feeding the other side through. So, Let's get this on here. And now we're just going to continue. Um, now we're doing a third pass from here. All right, so with the third pass, again, you're just going to do the same thing. See where this one, this cord is going in this direction? We're just going to follow along and now triple up our passes. Okay, so I've done three passes in total. Now it's gonna be a lot easier to keep the ball bearing where it is. Uh, at this point, before I do a fourth pass, I think I'm just gonna tighten it up a little. So you just do the same thing as you would, like say with a monkey's fist. Just kind of choose an area, kind of pull a bit, and just cinch all that slack all the way through. Just make sure you keep track of where you are and follow the strand through. See, it might end up you know, coming out there, but yeah, so tighten that up. You could do this later if you want. I'm just going to go now because I don't want the um, ball bearing to fall out. But I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit and then we're going to do the fourth pass. 
Okay, so three passes down. Now we're just going to do the fourth one. Same thing. Um, look at the direction which your rope is going. Now my strands are more or less even. If I do a fourth pass with this current one, it's going to make one side shorter, but that's okay. We can always adjust later by pulling on this string to shorten one side and feed it all the way through. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the fourth pass. Okay, fourth pass is done, but I most actually will need a fifth pass because you can see there's still a lot of uh, ball bearing showing and if I push hard enough, say on this side, it's going to press the uh, ball bearing out, I think. I don't want to actually do it because it'll ruin everything. So I'm going to do a fifth pass and um, I'm pretty sure that should be enough, but if not, we'll do a sixth. It may, may or may not take you along for that because it's not necessary, but same thing. So just to check the length of your cords, I think I'm still more or less kind of equal, but Whichever one is longer, I might switch to the other side and do another um, six pass. And again, if I go with this one, you know, we're just gonna follow like that. Okay. Or fifth pass, I mean. All right. Okay, so that is five passes. I don't think I need a sixth one, but uh, it does feel still a little loose, but I think that's just because uh, we need to tighten up the um, the knots or the weaves around it. So I I don't yeah, definitely don't want to do a, a sixth pass. I think it's a little too much, but uh, have a look at both sides of the ball bearing. Make sure that the surface area looks more or less equal. If it's a bit larger or smaller on one side, you kind of like spread the rope out and make it a little more even. And then from there, uh, pull out all the slack and get everything as tight as possible. And that will definitely help with um, keeping this ball bearing in place. So I'm gonna do that and then we can work on the lanyard part. Okay, so I'm done uh, cinching out all the slack and I've also evened up my, uh, my lengths of paracord. So now if you'll notice, uh, if you look here, you see how these strands are kind of unequal? Like if I held it up, it'd be held up by this side, the lanyard part. It's not very symmetrical. So uh, you see this strand here, I've got my fit attached to it. I'm going to take it underneath these strands and make it come out right here. I'm pretty sure that'll work okay. Like that, Just push it through and hopefully this works out okay. There you go. See, so now both strands are coming out the very top and it's nice and evil, even when you're holding it up like this way. It's very, the weight is distributed equally. So now from this point, um, yeah, we're going to tie the lanyard and it's really up to you what you want to do because you've got two strands coming out this way. Um, you can tie a snake knot here. I'm going to think I'll tie a diamond knot here real quick. So let's go through that. Let's do that really quickly. Let's bring this around. Of course, I will link my uh, diamond knot tutorial down below. Don't need to go through that every single time. Take this cord underneath. And this one underneath here. So you know that was a bit of a mess, but of course check my dedicated diamond knot tutorial. Okay, so got that there. Let's uh, cinch this diamond knot closer. Okay, that looks pretty good. You can cinch this even closer if you want. But as I said, um, yeah, it's really up to you what you want to do at this point. I mean, if you wanted, you can take a length up here Bent, turn these around 
and we can start doing Cobra knots from here like this. Close that up like so. Now, of course, I'd probably make this a bit longer if you're using this or if you're making this for kind of like a self-defense purpose, you want a bit more of a grip here. Let's say you can just do that. Let's just do continue this for now because it's kind of cool. You probably want this longer though, of course, like I said. Just tying some cobra knots down this way. Right, so there you kind of have like a handle. Of course, I would make this much longer. Or what I might do is I'm going to undo this and just continue tying some, uh, tying a snake knot down the strands, and uh, we'll see where that goes. So alternatively, if you want to keep this like a longer lanyard on this side, um, what I was thinking of doing, so I tied a single diamond or uh, walnut here. Let's just tie another one. Very simple. Make a loop behind, bring this one behind, put that through here. Okay, so it's very easy. Also known as a snake knot. I've got lots of tutorials on how to do that one. So I've got this, which looks quite nice. Now to make a kind of loop on this side, I think what I'll do is I'm going to tie, I'm going to tie another diamond knot Maybe, say six inch, no, maybe six or seven inches, about right there. So I'm going to tie a diamond knot right here. So to finish it off, leaving a slightly longer tail, I uh, have my diamond knot here, like I said. And we're just going to end it off with a nice little key ring here. So we're going to take our two strands and you know, pull them through the key ring like so. Now you're basically tying two snake knots, but on the end of this key ring and it looks quite nice. So we've got our two strands like this. Now we're going to take the strand on the right here and go around everything, bring it around behind. like so. And then this strand here on the left, we're going to go behind everything, bring it through this loop here. And we're going to pull that tight. You're gonna cinch it up like that. So now that was a little, might have been a little confusing, but the way you want to look at it is you're just still tying the same snake knot, but you're just gonna pretend that these middle cords aren't here. So again, take this strand around everything like that, and then bring this strand behind and go through this loop here. All right, and then pull that tight. Okay, there we go. See, we got two snake knots there. And now we just snip and singe these two ends and it's finished off with a key ring like that. I'm gonna have to even out this side here. Okay, but I'm just gonna snip and singe that and we'll be done. Okay, and there we have it, I'm done. So I snipped and singed off the excess here. I apologize if this last part wasn't clear. Um, I will do a standalone tutorial for that just to make it easier. I'll upload that shortly after, but uh, I'm just really tired again, guys. I'm sorry. Anyways, this turned out really well, I think. Um, yeah, this is cool. It's very a little different from the monkey's fist, and I like how you can see the ball bearing inside. Of course, you can use different stuff like golf balls or eight balls or you know, whatever you want, and uh, it'll look pretty nice. Okay, so that is it, guys. This has been the Celtic Slammer 
keychain tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Remember, if you're looking for any of the materials and stuff I use, check out the affiliate links down below. When you shop through those, you're helping out this channel greatly. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, uh, do leave them down below. I've been getting a lot of uh, comments and questions lately, and I'm a little short on time as of late, so I don't always get back right away, but uh, I'll do my best, okay guys? I'm trying. <laughs> so anyways, uh, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.